Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to England once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. Now, we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel once before, and if memory serves me correctly, that review appeared on the channel a little over a year ago, late spring, early summer of 2023 but uh, I was really impressed with that last beer that I tried from them. Uh, these guys are yet another relatively new addition to the local beer scene. They've built up a very good reputation for themselves in that short period of time though mainly because they have a very good pedigree behind them but if people were to ask me about this brewery I would say that they're best known for their different kinds of New England hazy whatever you want to call them IPAs but in recent times they've been diversifying their output quite a little bit doing some sour beers some uh, big imperial stouts and also quite a few west coast IPAs as well and they're all supposed to be pretty damn good actually. But uh, the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I haven't tried from this brewery before. It's one that they are supposed to be pretty damn good at and it was the one that really kind of stuck out to me of the selection of their beers that I saw here in Hong Kong. So needless to say I'm very very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, like I said, we are going to head over to England once again. We're going to go to the city of Liverpool, and we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Asvex Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Void Eater. It comes in at 12% ABV and this one is an Imperial Stout and apparently they've added quite a lot of hazelnut and uh, chocolate into this one. So uh, yeah, it's another beer that I picked up from the wonderful Gur Beer in Chim Sha Tui, uh, here in Kowloon in Hong Kong and they had like seven or eight beers from this brewery which was quite impressive. The other ones were all kind of IPAs and paleos and stuff like this. But yeah, the last beer that I tried from these guys was called Seen Rabbits. It was like an 8-9% uh, New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So this was the one that kind of uh, stood out to me just simply for the fact that it was a style that I hadn't tried from these guys. And as I often say, um, to get a good measure of a brewery, you should try something from the lighter end of the spectrum and from the darker end of the spectrum so yeah I know they can do the lighter end and the IPAs very well so I'm curious to see how Asvex do their Imperial Stouts so yeah since this is a Liverpool beer a massive shout out to my good friend Adam Johnson of uh, Mersey Beers on YouTube a uh, really lovely guy and I'm sure he'll feature on the channel again at some point fairly soon I do want to go to Liverpool and visit him and film an out and about video at some of the places uh, that he often talks about so we need to see about making that happen probably in summer of 2025 so keep your eyes peeled for those videos toward the end of 2025 but yeah definitely cool to return to these guys i know this is a brewery that adam rates very highly and he really knows his stuff when it comes to beer so yeah let's crack on then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us the void eater 12 percent imperial style from asvex brewing company in Liverpool in England. So as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though just fast forward all the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Asvex Brewing Company before and hopefully we can add a few more to that list at some point in the near future. I do hope that we'll see more Asvex stuff making its way out here to Hong Kong but uh, there's all the usual social media down there if you want to to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the support that you give is massively appreciated and remember you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system so just go in there use the little search bar put in your hometown state county province whatever you like if I review beers from the area that you search for they will pop up failing that though you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries you'll find this one in the English playlist along with a number of other things that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and uh, do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well because there are some very interesting things on the channel these days. But uh, yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about Asvex Brewing Company once again before we taste the beer. So, um, Asvex Brewing Company, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Liverpool in England and the company was founded back in 2020 by Adam Henderson. Now, Adam has a background as an engineer and he worked for Rolls-Royce for a number of years 
but he also dabbled for quite a few years with home brewing and he got very deep into the hobby. But after taking part in and winning one of Brewdog's local home brewing competitions, he went on to co found Neon Raptor Brewing, first as a gypsy brewery before they settled in Nottingham in 2018. So he remained with Neon Raptor until 2020 during the COVID pandemic when he said that he realised he wanted to go in a different direction in comparison with his business partners. And so he decided at this point that he wanted to sell his share in the company and found his own brand. Um, so he chose Liverpool as his location and he found a premises at King Edward Triangle and he completely renovated this unit and installed a four vessel brew house from bespoke brewing systems. They went on to release their first beers in 2021 and then they opened a tap room on site in April 2022 and over the last two years or so they've just been working to increase their output, develop new recipes and get their beers out there uh, a little bit more to places like uh, here in Hong Kong. So uh, yeah, as of August 2024, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 205 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. Like I said earlier, they're probably best known for their different kinds of New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs. But uh, yeah, they are supposed to be very good when it comes to some other styles of beer as well. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for uh, for those ones. But uh, yeah, if you like a good New England hazy, you are in for a treat with this brewing. It's been quite interesting to see the uh, the beer scene expand in Liverpool over the last little while because Manchester was the one that was really known for its, uh, its craft beer, of course. But uh, yeah, that's everything I can really tell you about uh, Asvex Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. And do make sure you check out my English beer tubing colleagues as well, because they probably review these beers uh, pretty regularly. It's quite hard to keep up to date with uh, everything that everybody's doing but of course you've got Peter the Clueless Drinker, Harry of Blue Nose Beer Reviews, um, Rob of Hawk Scene, um, Jake of uh, J. Cole Beer and uh, Craig of Kent Beer Reviews, uh, Bullman, Bullman's Beer, Raggy of course as well all of these guys have probably had a look at some of the Asvex uh, beers of course so take a look at their channel it's lovely lovely dudes and uh, yeah, if you want to keep up to date on the craft beer scene in England, those are you guys that you want to check out. But uh, yeah, let's go on then and have a little look at the beer itself. But check out all those links in the video description below that I mentioned. And I'll try to tag some of my um, my English beer tubing colleagues as well for you to check out. So um, yeah, let's go on then and have a wee look at the beer itself, like I said. So uh, as you can see, the artwork on this one is a little bit black metal and uh, I googled this before uh, filming the review and apparently there is a Norwegian black metal band that were called uh, Void Eater until 2019 and they changed their name to like Sepharagus or something like that so I do wonder if this beer is named as a kind of tribute to them because a lot of brewers do like heavy metal I like heavy metal as well but you can see uh, gold top can on this one as I said earlier this is a 12% ABV Imperial Stout, um, 440 milliliter can. This one cost me 150 Hong Kong dollars, so that's about 15 pounds sterling. Was a little bit pricey, but you know this was a kind of fuck it, why not moment. Um, but yeah, that translates to maybe 17 euros, 18 dollars American, something like that. So yeah, it really was a kind of fuck it, why not moment. But like I said, this beer, 12% ABV Imperial Stout. It contains uh, oats and wheat, so we're going to expect a big sort of creamy mouthfeel out of this one. And they've added quite a lot of hazelnut and uh, chocolate into the beer too. And I also notice that it has the Swedish pant on it as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass and let's see what it's all about. 12% EBV Imperial Stout from the wonderful Asvex Brewing in Liverpool in England. So... Let's do this. I'm really curious about this one. Oh, very silky on the pour actually. But this is definitely going to be a sipper for the next hour or two. You can tell that. We've got the vast majority of it out and into the glass there. And I have to say that does look 
pretty damn impressive. Now, with this one having a lot of chocolate and hazelnut added into it, you might well think that it's going to be an imperial pastry stout, but I'm not 100% sure about that in all honesty. And when it comes to imperial pastry stouts, I have to admit I'm not the biggest fan. I'm not the greatest fan of the kind of granola or sort of marzipani flavours you can get out of that particular substyle. I'm much more of a fan of the... Um, you know the old kind of cakey stouts that you get from Omni Poil, that's probably the closest thing. But yeah, an old school Russian Imperial Stout or an Imperial Milk Stout or even an Imperial Coffee Stout um, are much more preferable to me than an Imperial Pastry Stout, I have to say. So yeah, we'll need to see how exactly this one turns out. But you can see that when we poured this beer we had very little in the way of head, there was just a little kind of foamy ring around the edge of the glass there but you had one or two big bubbles sticking toward the uh, the side of the glass and a few little ones just uh, going up towards the uh, the surface of the beer there but yeah you can see there's pretty much nothing sitting there on the top of that you can just see one or two bubbles sitting there on the side of the glass but yeah in terms of the appearance of the beer um, it's not unexpected that the an imperial stout comes out like this lovely dark sort of ebony rosewood color to this one remember the color of your beer depends on a few things one the type of malts that you use this goes a long way to determining your epc rating two length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort the more the sugar is caramelized and thus you get a darker color of beer any barrel aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its color as well but that can um you know in terms of black beers like imperial porters and imperial stout it's very difficult for the adjuncts of the barrel to play a role in actually changing the colour of the beer. This lovely dark ebony rosewood colour that this one has is pretty common for this style. Um, if we shine the light through it, I will say that it's pretty damn opaque. Even if we put the light up very, very close to this one, it really is very, very opaque. And that is probably due to the presence of oats and wheat in the, um, in the backbone uh and the multi bill of this beer so uh yeah that's probably the reason why this one is so opaque and thick and things like that but um yeah with the imperial stout um you can play with these beers in a few different ways you can do a double mash for example which gives you that bigger sort of thick sticky mouth feel you can do a longer wort boil which is going to give you a slightly drier beer overall and a more kind of complex uh, flavor or you can put adjuncts in it of course or you can do barrel aging where you sacrifice a bit of the mouthfeel, but again, you get more kind of um, infused flavours. I get the feeling though that this beer is most likely to be kind of double mash. Um, and yeah, we know it's not barrel aged or anything like that. Maybe it's had a slightly longer wort boil as well. We'll just need to see. But um, yeah, all in all, appearance wise, this one is uh, exactly what you would expect of the Imperial Stout style category. So um, yeah, I think we can uh, leave it at that for the appearance side of things. Let's go on and just have a little look at the aroma of this beer and see how it turns out. I have to say, I'm very, very curious about this. Oh, that's very, very sweet. So um, yeah, um, I get the feeling this one is going to be more of an imperial pastry stout. But yeah, I will say it doesn't have um, so much of that kind of granola type note or the kind of marzipan -y thing that I don't like about this particular substyle and the aroma. It's not too detectable, in all honesty. But I will say this beer is probably going to be a sipper that will last a good few hours. This is going to be one that's quite difficult to, uh, to drink myself. Um, so yeah, you can tell that right away with this one. I've got a feeling this is going to be a big, thick, sticky kind of double mash imperial stout. But um, the aroma is, is pretty nice, but it's nothing unusual uh, for this particular sub-style of beer, I guess you could say. So um, yeah, let's have a wee look at that and see uh, what's going on a bit more closely with this one. So um, yeah, backbone of the beer. Um, well, generally speaking, this one is quite sweet and chocolatey. There's a lot of chocolate and the hazelnut comes out of this one, but it's got a lot of nice bready characters and it comes across as being very, very silky, just to summarise it very briefly. But yeah, the backbone of this beer, um, you can smell a little bit of that kind of more 
there's a little bit of a more kind of wholemeal brown bready bread crust in there um, you certainly get like a little bit of kind of woodiness out of this one too um, lots of kind of Jacob's cream cracker in there um, there's a little touch of like a wholemeal brown bready character to the beer but all in all I would say that the the malty backbone is a little bit more akin to like a a sort of chocolate sponge actually so yeah more like a kind of yeah sweet chocolate sponge it reminds me of calling the caterpillar cake actually from Marks and Spencer's um, but yeah the how do you say oh I get a little bit sleepy oh yeah so a lot of the kind of malty backbone that you have in this one is this kind of like milk chocolate sponge um, cake and um, you definitely get the hazelnut blended into all of that of course the hazelnut's kind of infused throughout the beer um, but on top of that you get the actual just chocolate notes out of it and for me the chocolatey character in this beer is kind of like maybe 40-50% cocoa chocolate it's got quite a little bit of there is a little touch of darkness to it but further forward on the nose of course you're getting the sweeter aspects of it I get quite a wee bit of vanilla out of this beer as well um, that's for sure um, but like I say I think this one is likely to be a double mash um, yeah it's quite likely to be a double mash beer um, but on top of the the chocolatey side of things there's a good little bit of brown sugar in there um, not too much leatheriness out of it and usually the leathery character uh, that you might find is the product of uh, a longer wort boil and it gives you these more kind of uh, complex flavours but yeah there's some sweet caramel in there there is a little bit of treacle and molasses and you do get just a little bit of toasty uh, brown sugar as well but the um, at the back of the nose you do certainly get a little bit of yeastiness out of this one and it does have like I will say the yeasty side of this beer has a little bit of that marzipani thing that I'm not madly keen on in all honesty so you can smell that there's a bit of a kind of chocolate spongy character to the yeasty side of things and a wee bit of uh, kind of brown bread as well but all in all the malty and yeasty side of this beer it's in some ways it's quite straightforward but it is actually quite nice it's not one of the more granola or marzipani imperial stouts that i've uh, come across anyway but yeah on the hoppy side of things there's not too much to report the imperial stout is of course not the um it's not the most hop forward style of beer um but you do get little remnants of that in here there's a little bit of earthiness there's a little bit of herbal character of course and you can smell wee bits of um grassy and floral characters uh, coming out of this one too but yeah the hoppy side of things um, has a wee bit um, the hoppy yeah that you do get more grassiness out of this one the more that you smell this beer the more grassiness you get out of it so that's kind of an interesting point to uh, to make with this one as well but um, yeah in all honesty the green component isn't there isn't too much going on with this one so yeah for me the fruity side of this beer then um it's not too sharp i mean maybe a wee touch of like fig black currant if you sugar it up you get a little touch of like plummy not so yeah a little touch of plum a little bit of fig a little bit of black currant but other than that i don't know if there's really much more to report uh, on this beer in terms of its aroma so yeah um, as I always say take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but I think it's about time that we try this one and see what it's all about so yeah this is the Void Eater a 12% Imperial Stout with hazelnut and chocolate from uh, Asbex Brewing in Liverpool in England a special shout out once again to the wonderful Adam Johnson of uh, Mersey Beer. So yeah, let's taste this and see what it's all about. Again, a little bit sleepy filming this one, of course, so I hope it's still coherent, but let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, and cheers.
yeah straight away I'm going to tell you Imperial Pastry Stout but I will also say as someone who doesn't like the style particularly much um, it's pretty decently done it's not too granola it's not too marzipani it is just more um, kind of silky and smooth in a way um, yeah it's more yeah this one in terms of the imperial pastry stouts I think one of the reasons I liked on reflection one of the reasons that I liked uh, you know the Noah and the Agamemnon and all these kind of crazy beers that were coming out of Omnipoil back in the day it was because they were more kind of brown sugar leaning leaning um, these ones these more modern pastry stouts are a bit more malty cakey grainy leaning but um, yeah as I say I do like how um, how these kind of all piece together so um, yeah all in all it's a really really nice um, take on the pastry stout style and as I say I, I don't particularly like these all that much um, I was expecting more of a kind of sweet imperial milk stout sort of thing but I was curious to see how uh, they did the style too that was the main reason behind uh, going for this one but I'll certainly be able to finish this it will take me a wee bit of time but still it is nicely done so thumbs up to Asvex for pulling off a pretty damn solid beer here um, but yeah let's try and break the flavour down for you then and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth so yeah middle third of your palate then the backbone of the beer you can feel there is a little touch of like a kind of rye bready bread crust in there just a smattering of it across that backbone of your palate there but as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate you'll get a little bit of woodiness there definitely a little touch of woodiness and a wee touch of vanilla within that as well but yeah that kind of rye bready bread crusty character there but the backbone of the beer is more along the lines of um, yeah it is more along the lines of uh, um, like the edge of a chocolate sponge you know the bit that kind of sticks to the the baking tray it's kind of like that the backbone of your beer in this case is more like that slightly caramelized chewy edge of a, a baked cake it's something like that but yeah um, above that layer you start to get you do get a wee bit of rye bread and then you have a more kind of chocolate spun well maybe more of a kind of chocolate muffin layer then you've got a kind of chocolate spongy layer sitting above that too so yeah you've got your rye bread your chocolate muffin and your chocolate sponge and within all of those layers you can pick out the kind of hazelnutty character in this beer as well So yeah, you've got that nice, um, as I say, you've got that really, really nice, um, the hazelnutty character kind of lingers into the aftertaste with this one. This beer does get a little bit drier the further into the aftertaste that you go, but um, yeah, the nuttiness comes out of this one, um, comes out of this one too. But on the, um, yeah, the nuttiness actually gives you a little bit of sweetness into the aftertaste too, which is really interesting. But yeah, above all of that, there's a wee bit of, um, there's a little bit of, I would say, um, above the, yeah, above the kind of chocolate spongy layer, it's difficult to pick out whether the chocolate comes out first or the brown sugars, but yeah, those are the things. So you can feel the kind of chocolatey layer. And as I've often said, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palate, more dry and bitter flavours come out further back. So with the chocolate, you have the chocolate layer sitting above the chocolate sponge. And uh, 
the cho yeah, the chocolate layers that come out of the chocolate sponge are a wee bit more like um they're kind of more just more embedded, but the layer above that you can feel that you've got the slightly higher uh cocoa chocolate notes uh come out of this one. So it's maybe more like um yeah it's maybe more of a I would say 50 60 percent cocoa chocolate in there um, yeah more of a 50 60 percent cocoa chocolate uh, further back but then as you move further forward it becomes a more 30 40 percent uh, cocoa chocolate actually so yeah you can feel that kind of gradient and as I say sweeter flavors come out further forward on the palate but above that chocolate layer, so maybe got a bit of that kind of cocoa nibby dryness further back as well but yeah the brown sugars above that you've got a little touch of a toasty brown sugar coming out of it so yeah toasty brown sugar in there and then you can feel a slightly more leathery brown sugar but I don't know if I'd go as far as saying that this beer has had a particularly long uh, wart boil. I think it's just it's very slight leathery smooth. So yeah, toasty brown sugar, leathery brown sugar. Above that you've got the more kind of, it's like a caramelly, mapley syrup sort of layer. And in the dead centre of your palate, you have a wee bit more of that, um, you've, yeah, you've definitely got a wee bit more of that kind of treacle, molasses sort of thing uh, going on. So yeah, the way that that pieces together I think is really interesting in this beer. Yeah, so a good little bit of treacle and molasses in there, the dead centre of your and maybe a little bit of a honeycomb or biscuity note just sitting on top of that, but yeah, the complexity, the vast majority of the complexity of the flavour of this beer sits in that middle third of your palate, um, so yeah, that's quite easy to pick up in this one. Let's go to the uh, the back third of your palate. As I've often said, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palate, dry and bitter flavours come out further back, but your middle and your back third of your palate are interesting because you get similar flavours, but they just come out at different intensities. But yeah, the border region between um, middle and back third of your palate, you get that nice little bit of bready build up in there. But yeah, you've got the rye bread in the base, the whole meal brown bread sitting on top of that then the more kind of chocolate spongy note and the chocolate spongy note of course has the hazelnut kind of embedded into it but the base of the back third of your palate the woodiness you, you have got a little bit of like woodiness there which is kind of dry but yeah you've got that cakey bread crust kind of forming the backbone of the the beer there it was drier then you've got the kind of rye bread layer which was a little bit lighter taller and more airy the kind of chocolate spongy layer which again feels a little bit lighter drier and more airy or more of the chocolate muffin actually i would say and then it's the chocolate sponge above that so yeah um rye bread chocolate muffin chocolate sponge yeah i think that's fair and then some of the drier aspects of the chocolate creep over the top of that and yeah some of the more toasty uh brown sugary notes come out of it as well but um yeah the way that that pieces together I think is uh, is really really nice um, I don't mean to say anything more about that yeah but the only other thing to add to that back for you about you can feel the nutty dryness coming out of the beer a little bit more so yeah as you push um, as you sit, as you go on top of all that you start to get the yeasty side of the beer so you can feel the yeasty side of this beer has got this really dense kind of rye bready character in the middle and it's quite sweet actually but then yeah as you move further out from that you get more of the kind of chocolate spongy note and a bit of a toasty or kind of dry cake crusty kind of note coming out of the beer as well so you can feel all of that um, yeah you can feel all of that in there with this one so definitely yeah back third of your palate you can feel the flavour is um, taller then as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that a little bit more. So the yeasty character in this beer lingers there a little bit, but yeah, it's the kind of cakiness and the nuttiness that comes out of this one, and I think that's uh, really, really nice. So, um, yeah, it's good stuff. It really is very good stuff um, in this one. 
On the hoppy side of things, where your green component, there's not too much to report in this beer, but you know, you'd kind of expect that. It's an imperial pastry stout, this beer, all the way, so not too much hoppiness. But still, in the back corners of the palate, you've got that nice little bit of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, there's a little touch of herbal character, then as you push further and further forward from that, it just it gives you a very slight floral aromaticity and a very slight grassiness around the front curve of the tongue. But the edges of your palate in this beer are more... Um, yeah, they're more smooth rather than anything else. So, um, yeah, the way that that goes together is really interesting. Um, I just noticed on the ingredients list here, it doesn't actually list hops as um, doesn't list hops as an ingredient. So I wonder. Yeah, usually even imperial pastry stouts have a little bit of hoppy character in them. So that's quite unusual in this one. Maybe that explains why the side of your palate is so smooth in this particular in this particular beer it could well be that uh, this beer is giving you a bit of the same uh, green component placebo that you get from smoothie sours i don't know food for thought there but yeah let's have a little look at the front 30 palette then and the fruity side of the beer so yeah border region between front third and middle 30 palette you get that nice little bit of kind of bready build up in there the base is the kind of rye bready character then you've got the chocolate muffin notes and the more um, like chocolate spongy character there, the base of the front third of your palate, of course, you've got the kind of rye bready bread crust with the kind of chocolate, uh, with the sort of cakey edge to it, a little bit of woodiness of course in there, but then yeah, rye bread, chocolate muffin, chocolate sponge, and then a wee bit of the kind of smoother chocolate sitting there, and above that you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll the way out of the beer. So let's have a little look at that fruity side of things then. So yeah, the fruity side of the beer for me is um, kind of what you'd expect, in all honesty. And I'm wondering, you know, the fruity side of the beer and the aroma wasn't all that pungent. And I'm wondering if that's because the, the hops, I mean, maybe there isn't hops in this one. And that would make sense um, because, yeah, you, I noticed that on the front third of your palate, the fruity side of this one is just a lot less pronounced. So maybe some of these imperial pastry sauce are simply like a fermented malt base. Is that all they are? So that's maybe why I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like the style all that much. Maybe I just feel they need a bit of hops in there. Um, but yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, there's a little touch of like plum and maybe a little bit of like date underneath and as you move further forward on the palate a little bit of fig and then yeah as you move into the front half of the front third of your tongue it's more like a kind of black currant or something like that so yeah I think plum date fig black currant I think that describes the fruity uh, side of this beer pretty well in all honesty so yeah mm. So yeah, that is quite interesting in this one. Um, on the, I think I don't think we need to say anything more about the flavour of this one. Then we can round off the review with a wee quick look at the mouthfeel. So for me, it's definitely a full-bodied beer. This one, maybe mid-range to pushing toward the top end of mid -bo of a uh, full-bodied. Sorry, carbonation is very very smooth, fairly silky, and slightly creamy mouthfeel. I would say this one as well. IBU count in this beer, it does actually have a little touch of bitterness, I think, into the aftertaste because of the roasty toastiness. So yeah, there is a little bit of roasty toasty character to this one, which is uh, which is quite interesting. But all in all, yeah, more of a kind of roasty toasty um, note in there. So there's that wee bit of bitterness, but maybe the IBU is about 30-ish, 40-ish, something like that. But yeah, maybe I'm conflating dryness with bitterness. But the malt base that we say, there's got a bit of dryness underneath, the smoothness in the middle, and the kind of drier sweetness sitting on top of it. We've said, yeah, about 40-ish IBUs, and then you've just got that little touch of fruity character. But as I say, the interesting thing about this beer for me is that it might not have hops in it. I'd be very, very curious to know uh, what the deal there is. So um, yeah, really interesting beer, this one, that has made me think a little bit more but the Imperial Pastry Stouts. Like I say, not my favourite style, but this is certainly one of the more kind of uh, drinkable ones that uh, I've come across 
Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. Kind of wish I had somebody to share the can with though, because it is quite a sickly beer, I will say that. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This was the Void Eater, a chocolate and hazelnut imperial stout from uh, Asvex Brewing Company in Liverpool in England. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Asvex Brewing Company as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, slanja, skull, cheers, and I'll catch you guys in the next review. Ciao just now.